Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me, MJ. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be making a robotic hand. So it has elements of 3D design, also a bit of electronics and how we can use ChatGPT to code. So for someone like me who can't really code at all, um, I was successful in using ChatGPT to do the coding for me to make this little robotic hand. So let's get into it. So this is the hand we're going to be looking at. I'll include the link in the description so you can download it. As you can see, it's got uh, two little holes there and then the string is fed through there. Uh, the attachment part that I made, I just screwed in. So I aligned the holes and I screwed it in there. We'll have a look at that now. So it's quite cool. You can see it's got quite a bit of functionality. Um, there's quite a few remixes of this particular hand. It's got these flexible filament joints, so there's no screws and stuff. So it makes it quite a nice, easy to put together hand and very straightforward. So we saw what the, what the hand looked like in the design, but you can see we've got these uh, flexi TPU um, pieces, the finger joints. They slot into little pieces there. I won't disassemble this whole thing because I struggled a bit. Um, because my finger bits weren't quite even, but you can see if it's printed properly, they slot in quite easily. And then they all go into the hand. Just like that. Um, these joints over here, they're a bit of a mission. They're quite a bit bigger and they slot in. I could use a screwdriver to put them in, but uh, in the video that I've linked, it shows you how to get that all together. Also has a link to the, the download file for this particular hand. It's pretty cool. Um, I went with this one because it's uh, more hand shaped. The other one's got uh, moving parts on the thumb. So I wanted a, something simple and this one looks really good. And then you can see as we pull a string, the various parts of the hand are articulating or moving. I'm just gonna show you quick how to thread it. So I'm just using some builder's line here. Got a little hole at the bottom there. So it goes into these holes, push it through, and it pops out over there. I'll just grab it there and feed it through the finger. Make sure we get it through all the finger holes. And then when we get to the top, we will just go around it first. Can be a bit of a faff. So you want it to come out right at the tip, then you feed it back in, and we're gonna tie it, just tie it off over there. And I'll pull it tight. This builder's line is a bit tricky, doesn't go too tight, so I'll just burn the ends a little bit later on. Now you can see we've got that finger moving nicely, and I'll just cut it off there. So that's our hand. So these two will go together and the hand will go on top of it. It's got holes and I've got holes in the top here that I'll feed the wire through and then screw in and use a bit of glue. I have these little things that will slot in there and in the edges, but I made them exactly the same size as the gap. So we need to sand them down a little bit. Here are the few that I've already sanded. You can see going relatively easily and I'll just glue that in. And for those I do need to sand, I've just taken a 80 grit sandpaper and the flat side and the edge and then it just, it's still a little bit tight. Now that goes in quite nicely. Now it's just this one. So all the pieces are going to be stuck onto this. So we're going to just put 
put these in. That slots in quite nicely now. Now this one comes at the end. It only occurred to me afterwards that I should have just printed this as part of the arm, but hindsight is 2020, obviously. And then these will slot in here. I'll glue them all in now. And then I've built this frame. So you can see this frame. I've currently got some screws in there. The, it allows the servo motor to, you drop the wire in through the hole. And depending on which way you orient it, we've got these little grooves. And then I'll just secure them with some screws. And then this should, I haven't fitted this yet, you'll be putting our wires out there or out the front, undecided yet. In between those, and that will slot in there. And secure it. So the assembly is almost complete. I've got this frame holding all the servos, these little joints, this top part clips over, closes up, and screwed in there. And when the servo actuates, the finger will move. Now that we've got the hand together, we're gonna to be working on the code. So I'm here in ChatGPT. I'm gonna tell it what I need, and then let's see the code it gives us. So there we go, we've got the got ChatGPT writing the code for us. It's telling us which pins we're gonna be using um, for the signal, which pins are gonna be going out to the servos, and it's just uh, basically just getting everything working for us. Um, this isn't the exact code I used, uh, but it, it looks pretty similar. What I did was I had one or two issues where it wasn't turning a full 180 degrees, so I had to specify a pulse width modulator or PWM and it would write that in milliseconds, either extend it or shorten it to specify. And then I had this issue with the bounce, so the debounce delay. So I don't know what mine was, but the debounce delay helped the servers not to be a little bit jumpy, so they'll hop around a bit. But that's more or less what my code looks like. Um, what I did was I loaded it up to the Arduino Mega, which I'll show you how to do now. And then I just uh, worked through the process. When I wasn't getting what I needed, I would just tell ChatGPT, hey, um, the servers are only turning 90, or there's a delay in the press button, or at one stage I had one server that was jumping around when you pushed another button, and it fixed the code for me. So let's copy this code. And we'll go into Arduino IDE. So once you're here, you can just clear that and paste your code. Then it's gonna write in everything, it's gonna declare stuff. Um, what we'll find is uh, if we just check it, we might get one or two errors. So, okay, it's done compiling. What I found with my code was occasionally it would give me an error here and it would say a certain thing is not declared or whatever the case is. Um, but that's just how you go about it. Have a quick look at the code that I put on my device. So this is my code. Um, you can see it looks a bit different. We've got here the pulse width declared uh, for 0, 90 and 180 degrees. And then a bit of an adjustment. So what I did was the, the controller for the thumb, it only turns 90 degrees because obviously it's a, lot, it's a lot shorter. And I found that uh, flexed the thumb nicely. Uh, so I'm gonna include this code um, in a file. I'll probably have a, a shared file on a Google Drive where you can download a text document with this, or I can just save this file. Um, obviously you have to add your, your device in there. Um, you can go look up how to use Arduino IDE in a, another video, and then you can just paste it and send it to your device. 
Let's have a quick look at what it looks like once it is functional. So here's just a quick look at uh, the process I went through to get everything up and running. So ChatGPT told me which pins to connect where. So the, the RG and Omega is labeled with uh, the pin configuration that you need. Um, so I just put it in where it prompted me. And then I went about uploading the code and testing it. You can see the fingers just jittering a bit there. Bit of troubleshooting to get it going. And then finally I had what I needed. Let's take a look at that. So in this video you can see the servo is working. I hadn't uh, designed the little box that goes on the side yet with the buttons. But I was just testing out functionality there. I didn't have the string for the middle one. But here we go. I did a basic little box. And when you press the button, each finger goes. So there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please download all the files and give it a go yourself. Maybe leave a comment. Tell me how yours turned out. Until next time. Bye.